Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. My name is Jenny and I'm a part of the education team at Medit. Nice to meet you everyone. And today we have Dr. Kim here. Hi Jenny and welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, doctor. And thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar. So it's going to be the last lecture of the Hughes series about reducing chair time, right? Yes, you're right. Actually, it wasn't easy to prepare each series with meaningful experiments and useful clinical experiences. But time flies, and finally, we have arrived at the last lecture. Yeah, I think this series were very helpful for every clinician, and we all had enjoyed a lot. Thank you, I hope so. So today I had prepared the content about resolving various issues that can arise during the zirconia crown treatment process with a manual of troubleshooting. Mm. Then today's lecture is going to be the essential one that includes all the key points and summarizes all the previous lectures of series. Yes, right. Okay, then shall we begin, doctor? Sure. How to Reduce Chair Time Minimizing Occlusal Adjustment Part 5 Clinical Case Problem Resolution Process This lecture will focus on methods to reduce treatment time during a zirconia crown procedure. This marks the final lecture of our series and will explore the problem-solving processes case by case. The key topic is the efficient sharing of problems identified in the dental office with the dental lab. Effective communication between the dental office and lab is crucial in this process, as it significantly contributes to reducing treatment time. We'll analyze each case to demonstrate the problem-solving process, discussing how problems identified in the dental office can be efficiently shared with the lab. In this lecture, we'll sequentially examine the process of identifying and resolving various issues that can arise during the zirconia crown treatment process. First step, margin check. The initial step to ensure the crown fits perfectly. This involves inspecting if the crown fits snugly against the tooth without any gaps. Second step, proximal contact check. Evaluating the relationship with adjacent teeth. We'll discuss how to address situations when the proximal contact is too tight or loose. Third step, Occlusion check. Assessing whether the crown is at the correct height in relation to the occlusal surface. Strategies for dealing with occlusions that are too high or low will also be covered. For each step, we'll present case studies illustrating potential problems and explain in detail the solutions for addressing them. When a crown does not fully seat on the tooth, it generally boils down to two primary causes. One, internal fit issues. This occurs when the inner surface of the crown does not perfectly match the contour of the abutment tooth. Lack of precision during the fabrication process or errors during impression taking can lead to this issue. 2. Interference with adjacent teeth. This happens when the crown interferes with the neighboring teeth, preventing proper seating. This can be due to inaccuracies in considering the space or shape relative to the adjacent teeth during the crown's designing and manufacturing processes. To resolve these issues, accurate identification of the underlying cause is essential, to be followed by appropriate actions. Internal fit problems can be addressed through re-impression or reprocessing, while interferences with adjacent teeth can be resolved by adjusting the crown, in cases where a crown does not fully seat on the tooth, we must resolve the issue through the following steps. Accurate diagnosis. Identify the cause of the crown not seating completely. The main reasons could be inaccuracies in the margin or issues with proximal contact adjustment. First, check if the proximal contact is too tight. If so, carefully adjust this area to ensure proper proximal contact. Internal surface adjustment. If there's no issue with proximal contact, apply spray to the internal surface of the crown to identify early contact areas. If early contact is detected, 
Remove those areas to allow the crown to fully seat on the tooth. By following these steps, we can adjust the crown to fit perfectly on the tooth. It's crucial to accurately identify and address problems at each stage. In this video, we aim to identify and address the root causes of issues that may arise during the fabrication of zirconia crowns. Instead of simply addressing the symptoms of the problem, we'll focus on understanding and fundamentally solving the underlying causes. We fabricate both the temporary and the zirconia crowns simultaneously to prepare for situations where the zirconia crown cannot be set. We observe a situation where the temporary crown fits perfectly, but the zirconia crown does not. To verify whether the processing error has been improved, a scan is conducted. To identify why the zirconia crown doesn't fit, we verify the processing steps. Load both the design file and the actual scan file. Accurately align the two files in alignment mode. In deviation display mode, examine the differences between the two files. Here, a deviation exceeding 100 micrometers is identified. We check and adjust the calibration of the milling machine to ensure the accuracy of the processing. After making the necessary adjustments, the zirconia crown is remanufactured. Remanufacture the crown, rescan it, and compare it with the original design file. Load both files and apply the sintering shrinkage rate for zirconia. Compare the two files to ensure the issue has been resolved. We check if the remanufactured zirconia crown fits correctly and solve the problem. In this section, we'll discuss how to resolve situations where the crown doesn't fit properly due to interference with the surface of an adjacent tooth. This is a common issue when ensuring the proper fit of a crown. Carefully examine the area of proximal contact where the issue occurs to identify the exact location where the crown is catching. Once the interfering spot is identified, proceed with cautious adjustment. It's crucial to avoid damaging the adjacent tooth during this process. After adjusting the proximal contact, re-evaluate the fit of the crown. If necessary, perform additional adjustments to achieve a perfect fit. Perform a final check to ensure the crown fits perfectly. Proceed with the treatment only after confirming that all necessary adjustments have been made. Describe the step-by-step -step process for resolving situations where the crown's insertion angle is improper, causing it to catch on adjacent surfaces. Confirm that the fabricated temporary crown doesn't fit due to interference with the adjacent surface. In the design phase, contact with the adjacent surface is virtually removed and modify the design of the proximal surface. A zirconia crown is fabricated based on the modified design. The adjacent tooth is adjusted intraorally to ensure a proper fit of the crown. These steps outline the process for addressing the late discovery of a fracture in the prosthesis of an adjacent tooth during the crown setting. On the day of setting the zirconia, after using a temporary tooth, the patient reported discomfort due to food impaction. A fracture in the prosthesis of an adjacent tooth is discovered during the setting of the prosthesis. The fractured area of the prosthesis is trimmed and prepared, and a crown is remanufactured based on this impression. The remanufactured crown is set to improve the issue. Gaps between neighboring teeth can occur in situations such as when surrounding teeth or abutments are loosened due to periodontal disease, or when there has been a delay in setting the crown without a temporary tooth in place. In these scenarios, 
it's crucial to accurately identify the cause of the gap to devise an appropriate treatment plan. 1. Gap verification. Precisely verify if there's a gap between neighboring teeth. This involves using visual inspection and measurement tools to accurately measure the gap. 2. Design adjustment. Adjust the design of the crown or prosthesis to appropriately fill the gap between the neighboring teeth. This step is done precisely using digital software. 3. Crown fabrication and fit evaluation. Fabricate the crown based on the adjusted design and evaluate if the fabricated crown effectively fills the gap between the neighboring teeth. 4. Final adjustment and fit, if necessary, Make minor adjustments to the crown to perfectly solve the gap between neighboring teeth and ensure an optimal fit. During the gap verification process, we utilize measuring gauges that come in various thicknesses, each distinguished by different colors, for easy measurement of the gap size. For loose teeth, it's challenging to accurately replicate the interdental space during impression taking and can lead to discrepancies. In such situations, fabricating a temporary prosthesis to measure the interdental space and then remanufacturing the crown based on these measurements can be a practical solution. This video details the steps for using photography to measure gaps and improve the fit of dental prostheses, from verification to problem resolution. One. Verify that the fabricated prosthesis has a loose contact with the adjacent tooth. 2. Take photos to accurately document the intraoral situation. 3. Apply the photos taken to the design software to reflect the actual intraoral conditions. 4. Use the software to precisely measure the gap between neighboring teeth. 5. Modify the prosthesis design based on the measured data. 6. Remanufacture the prosthesis according to the modified design. Apply the remanufactured prosthesis to resolve the gap issue between adjacent teeth. If the prosthesis is high, it's necessary to determine how high it is to decide whether to adjust the occlusion or remake it. Let's use articulating paper to see how high the surrounding teeth are. Just so you know, this paper starts at 12 micrometers thick. The number of folds will tell us how much time we'll need for adjustment. One fold doubles it to 24 micrometers, and that's about a two to three minute job two folds, and we're at 48 micrometers, which should take around five minutes to adjust. Three folds get us to 96 micrometers, and that's a bit on the high side, so you might need around 10 minutes to adjust that. If you're folding the paper more than three times, it might be time to consider options other than adjusting. Up to three folds, it's usually manageable through some occlusal adjustment. We've confirmed that the temporary crown is over 100 micrometers high. Seeing the articulating paper slip from the surrounding teeth suggests that the crown may be too high. Fold articulating paper to determine how much the surrounding teeth are elevated. That's quite a bit off the mark. In such a case, we need to adjust the occlusion on the temporary crown. It's crucial to take it slow and be precise. Then we'll do a diagnostic scan, occlusal scan, and mandibular movement scan to make sure everything lines up just right. We also need to see how much the new scan deviates from the old one, because if it's close to the measured value, we know that the error has been properly compensated. Load both the previous and new scan files. Align the two files and examine the differences. 
measure the distance in a cross-sectional view. The measured values are similar to the thickness of the articulating paper. Once we pinpoint the problem, it's time for remanufacturing, and that's how we'll solve the issue. When the height of a prosthesis is too low, adjustments won't cut it. We need to remake it. The key here is to get all the prep work done right before remanufacturing. Determine the value of the low height and create a precise plan for the remake. Take new impressions to accurately reflect the current state, which is crucial for the accuracy of the remade prosthesis. Going through all these preparatory steps is essential to ensure that the remade prosthesis will have the proper height and fit. When we notice that the occlusion on a temporary tooth is too low, when articulating paper is folded four times and does not slip out, a discrepancy of approximately 200 microns is confirmed. We can easily raise it with resin. Apply resin to the low occlusal areas to restore the height. This step adjusts the temporary tooth to match the actual usage conditions. After the occlusion is raised with resin, proceed with a new diagnostic scan and occlusal scan. Check if the occlusion has increased by the measured discrepancy compared to the initial scan within the oral cavity. Load both the previous and new scan files. Align the two files. Cut a cross section and measure the values. Confirm that the measured values are similar to those measured intraorally. Remanufacture the prosthesis based on the new scan data. This addresses the issue of the occlusal height. By fitting the remanufactured temporary tooth, we resolve the occlusal issue and provide the patient with a well-fitting prosthesis. The last case involves scanning while biting on articulating paper. 1. Measure the interocclusal distance using articulating paper. When the articulating paper is folded five times and does not slip out, a discrepancy of approximately 400 microns is confirmed. 2. Perform an occlusal scan while biting on the articulating paper. 3. Compare the new scan with the previous scan for discrepancies. To compensate for the reduced height, it was confirmed that the values measured intraorally are similar to those obtained from the scan. 4. Remanufacture the crown. 5. Resolve the issue with the remanufactured crown. Thank you for sharing all your tips with us, Dr. Kim. Yes, I hope everyone has enjoyed the full episode of Reducing Chair Time. Yes, for sure. So let's move on to Q&A sessions. So today we have four questions in total. So I'll start with the first question. Okay, question number one. How do you solve the problem when you find out about insufficient crown thickness after patient leaves? If there is a bite issue, we prepare both a temporary crown and a zirconia crown to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. If only a small adjustment is needed, we modify the opposing tooth. However, 
if a significant adjustment is required, we will redo the tooth preparation for the above month, take a new impression, and fit a temporary crown. Okay, question number two. I feel that the fitness of the zirconia crown is a bit looser than the metal crown. So are there any clinical tips to increase the fitness of the crown? As I had mentioned during the webinar of a fabrication process part, it's crucial to properly maintain and use sophisticated milling equipment by selectively reflecting the equipment towards in a final gap you can achieve an excellent fit. Okay, question number three. When zirconia crown is delivered from the lab, it is high polished, but most of the time we need to do closer adjustment. So do you do high polishing after a closer adjustment? High polishing after a closer adjustment is essential to prevent the excessive wear of the opposing teeth. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to worry about changes in occlusion during this process. Okay, I see. So we are left with the last question. Question number four. Can you tell us the whole process of polishing zirconia crown? The tooth used for polishing before setting the crown in the clinic and after additional adjustment to port setting before. In all cases, it's recommended to adequately cool it with air or water. The key is to achieve the desired surface roughness at each stage before moving on to the next step. Mm. Okay, that's all about it for today. So you will be able to watch this webinar on our YouTube channel and Medit Academy once it's completed. Thank you for being here, Dr. Kim. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Hope to see you at our next webinar. Bye. Bye.